observation and about the link between integral systems and, 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 and quantum field theories. It's, it, is, it says that um, uh, that, uh, that at, 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 at low energies, uh, the, the dynamics of uh, 4D and equal, equals to systematic quantum field theories are governed by a complex integral system. Uh, and uh, so physics, important physics uh, uh, information is captured by, by geometry of that integral system. So uh, mainly the, the, you expect from this integral system uh, to get a, a toric, Lagrangian toric vibration of, a, of the base, which in this case is just a fine space, referred to as Coulomb branch by physicists, and uh, generic fibers would be a billion tori of uh, half of the dimension of the phase space. And uh, so that's uh, um, what uh, uh, is formulated as this complex integral system. So for the usual integral system, you just uh, uh, need to, uh, uh, that the integrals pass on compute and then under the circumstances, the level surfaces of integrals would be, would be tori, uh, real tori, but here it's a stronger requirement. You want this, uh, because we work in the complex uh, uh, space uh, or manifold, and we want uh, the, these level surfaces actually to be, uh, to be uh, compactified to a billion varieties, so it's a much stronger uh, requirement. Okay, so that. Uh, so Zyberg and Witten argued that each uh, supersymmetric quantum field theory would, would have some underlying integral system behind it. And, and then the problem is to find, to identify such an integral system for a, given, for a given theory. And it's a difficult problem, so usually people do just make a guess and then uh, do some consistency checks, and uh, that's usually enough to, 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 to be confident that that's the required integral system. And, um, Two main overlapping sources of such uh, uh, systems are uh, particle integral systems like a fine order and spin chains, uh, elliptical order model system. Uh, also, another source are Hitchin system on, on particle treatment surfaces. And uh, so, what we propose is that uh, these complex crystallographic collagen model systems, which are more general than, than the usual integral systems, in the sense that the group which we consider is not just real comp uh, crystallographic group, but we uh, complex uh, reflection groups uh, preserving the lattice. Okay, so uh, we expect that, uh, that this is a good source of uh, separate integral systems. Okay, so um, so far we, uh, we identify uh, this for this for the case of for the case of groups of that of that of that kind. So that's a risk product of the symmetric group with the uh, Roots of unity, and sort of unity. So the underlying uh, space, the, the, the manifold X I talked about before, uh, is just the nth uh, power of elliptic curve, on which you need to this the M to act. Of course, if you want uh, roots of unity to act, it's like rotation on, on, on the elliptic curves. This puts restrictions on the possible values of M. It's well known uh, elementary uh, genetic theorem that uh, M can be. Uh, Two, three, four, or six. So, uh, so the answer for these cases is that for M equals two, uh, the corresponding um, so the integral system uh, corresponds to the Zyberg in, uh, with an integral system for uh, for for, for uh, supersymmetric quantum theory with gauge group uh, USP to N, and uh, while for M equals three, four, and six, you get uh, Minahan, so called Minahan Nemeshansky. Uh, Superconformal field theories of type E, 6, 7, and 8, uh, of rank N in general. Uh, so, the, uh, a very nice feature of this uh, is that actually all the deformation parameters, which are coupling, coupling parameters in the integral system, they match precisely the uh, so called mass parameters uh, in, the, uh, in the field theory. Okay, so I, I will mostly talk about n equals 1 case when you have just elliptic curve with the action of the roots of unity. Okay, so let's uh, talk about this. Uh, so, uh, but uh, uh, hidden behind uh, these elliptic curves actually is, uh, is a well uh, known and, and uh, uh, loved by everybody. Uh, um, roots is uh, Dinkin diagrams of type 60, 70, 8. Uh, obviously, fine, fine uh, Dinkin diagrams. So, uh, 
in the eye, and uh, so red color indicates this extended extended uh, vertex. And if you if you count the number of dots on each, so, so each of these has a star-shaped uh, form, and uh, there is one central vertex and then legs. And if you count the uh, the number of uh, vertices on each leg, including the central node, then you get these numbers: three, three, three here, four, four, two, six, three, two. So these are legs, legs. Okay. So um, uh, a good colleague and uh, uh, Alistair King from uh, from us, uh, some of you uh, must know him. Uh, so uh, he uh, he told me that he refers to this as uh, three musketeers. Three musketeers and uh, to this triple A six seventy eight. And this is uh, even more appropriate because uh, actually there is D four as well. Okay. Um, right. So for in that case you have these numbers two 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 two. Okay. So. Uh, they correspond to these elliptic curves. So the first case correspond to just generic elliptic curve, when you have always have these synergies in two. Uh, if you if you need uh, symmetry of other three, the, the, the lattice should be uh, hexagonal. And uh, for this, for C4, it should be square lattice. And uh, again, hexagonal lattice uh, admits uh, symmetry of other six as well. Okay, so. In each case, uh, what you can do, you can consider the quotient uh, of your curve by, by the group. And uh, so uh, uh, the result will be just uh, essentially a Riemann sphere, but uh, more precisely, it will go or before the Riemann sphere at, uh, at a number of points, four points in this case. So, so what, I, what I list here are the orders of the local synergy groups at the or before the points. So uh, all twos, threes. So you see the same numbers appear here from that point of view. Okay, so that's kind of uh, heuristically a link between uh, uh, these uh, if I think in diagrams and uh, these uh, elliptic curves. Um, okay, so um, uh, but uh, towards the end uh, you will see this uh, these linking diagrams appearing uh, once again. But uh, so far they just have the background hidden, hidden deeply inside. All right. Here, here, just an illustration of what, yeah, what I just said. That you have, if you take a quotient of uh, for instance, poem equals two, just as an illustration. If you take a, a quotient by, by by Z2, then there are four fixed points indicated on this picture: x0, x1, x2, and x3. And if you take a map given by the weierstrass p function, that's a map, a map into a Riemann sphere. The images of these four points are those four or default points, and this stabilizes the order of. So each of these points has a stabilizer st is stabilized by, by Z2. So, so the order of the stabilizer is 2, and that's how you get these uh, four numbers 2, 2, 2, 2. If, for example, you look at M equals 6, uh, here you have uh, this, this point uh, is fixed by the whole group, so it has a stabilizer of order 6. Uh, then you have this orbit, uh, sorry, this orbit of length three, x, uh, x, x, and then another orbit of of, of, of length two, and uh, it means that the if I take this point, the stabilizer has order two, and uh, for it, it, any of these two red points, the stabilizer has order three. So so. Now you take a function which is invariant under the group. In this case, you need to take uh, the cube of the of, of the Weierstrass p function, and this is a map to p1. And uh, three points are just the images of these three, of those three orbits, and those stabilizers are from the six, three, two. So that's that's how it works. Okay. Right. So uh, let's move on now to theoretic algebra. So uh, very briefly, it's. Um, They, they were defined by Ettinger, so sometimes they're called like global, global Schrodinger algebras. Uh, and uh, so you start with a smooth uh, manifold, uh, complex manifold of dimension n, with uh, with an action of a finite group. And then uh, Ettinger constructs. Uh, okay, I will, I will mostly talk about the classical Schrodinger algebra. So this algebra, which I denote here H uh, C, uh, C stands for deformation parameters, um, 
and um, it's very algebra, uh, I, I call it B. Uh, C, uh, so these are defined as certain deformations of, uh, in the first case, it's, you take the issue uh, uh, of functions on the cotangent bundle, uh, semi-direct product with the uh, cross product with the group. So this is not commutative algebra. Um, in the second case, um, it's, uh, you take just uh, the, the sorbifold, so the cotangent bundle portion by W, or in other words, these are just double invariant uh, functions on the cotangent bundle, Tx, and uh, so this is commutative algebra, and uh, its deformation at the classical level will be this commutative algebra Bc. Okay, so that's uh, uh, the background, and uh, there's one uh, simple the simplest examples is just when you take your uh, manifold to be just a fine line, C, with the action of cyclic group Zm, uh, where the group acts uh, now on, uh, by roots of unity, but now you consider the cotangent bundle and uh, identify it with C2, and then the group acts in symplectic fashion like that by these matrix matrices. And the quotient of C2 by this group is well known, of course, so this is a singularity of type A, and you can describe the mean of functions on, 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 on this orbifold in that way. It's just uh, a singularity of type A, uh, minus one, and uh, information which uh, arises in this, uh, within this theory of Cherenic algebras would look like this. So again, you have Committed free and generated by three so polynomials on three letters, but uh, the quotient by the relation replacing D to M by arbitrary polynomial of degree M. After rescaling a variable uh, generated V and, and the shift, you can essentially assume that this is a monic polynomial with uh, one of the coefficients you can set to zero, so if effectively you have M minus one parameters. And this will be a Poisson deformation, in fact, in fact universal Poisson deformation of that. This singularity and uh, uh, so with m minus one parameters. Okay, so that's the simplest case. Now, uh, when, you, when you have elliptic curve, it's uh, uh, it has similar failures. So you have um, uh, a tangent bundle to elliptic curve. It's just a trigger bundle, so you can identify with this product, and the action of W will be again uh, similar to the previous example. And uh, now um, the yes okay so I will I will talk uh, a little bit more uh, say a little bit more on the next slide but uh, uh, from what I said it, you expect some deformation of these of the algebra of functions on this cotangent bundle and um, so unlike in the previous case it will not be just one algebra it will be a sheaf of algebras because uh, for choosing the double invariant chart will. You can, you, can, you can talk about global sections on this chart. And, and so the algebra which you get, the algebra of global sections, will depend on which chart you choose. But uh, um, an, an important property here, an important fact here, so if you consider global sections, so just on the whole, on the whole space, uh, the space of global sections, of course, you expect to be fairly small, and, but it's still non-trivial, and in general, it will be exactly this uh, commutative algebra generated by the Hamiltonian of that integrable system. Uh, and in this case, it's just uh, because we're in rank one, we expect just uh, one, one, one Hamiltonian. So the algebra of global sections is just polynomials in, in one, in one uh, element. And this would be Hamiltonian of my classical system. And it will be uh, of, of order M. So it will start with momentum. So P is momentum. So it will start with P2M plus lower, lower the terms, and the coefficients will be elliptic in, say, Q, if Q is coordinate on my elliptic curve. Okay, so you already see here that if M is greater than 2, it's not a, this Hamiltonian doesn't have a clear kind of maybe quantum, a classical mechanical meaning because momentum uh, enters in, in, in high degree. Okay, um, but nevertheless, uh, let's proceed. And uh, M equals 2 case actually is, is, is better known and familiar. It's, uh, in that case, the Hamiltonian will look like this. Uh, it's uh, p squared 
plus this function, uh, elliptic function, combination of three, uh, four, four, four terms, uh, so large trust function shifted by half periods on the elliptic curve, and these are coupling parameters, so there are four coupling parameters, uh, usually uh, noted like this, gi squared, and uh, m equals three is, uh, is looking like this, it's cubic, p cube, P, there is no p squared term, and then coefficients are elliptic. So certain combinations of p and p prime. So eta should be eta two here, not eta three. Uh, eta one and eta two are those. Remember on the picture we had fixed on. Uh, we had two red points fixed by uh, by uh, rotation by uh, action by the z three. And um, for m equals 0.6, uh, Hamiltonians are more complicated uh, but, uh, and, and have more parameters, so 7 and 8 parameters respectively. In this case we have uh, 4 parameters here and a1, 2, 3, a2, b2, c2, a3, b3, 6 parameters here. And what's the power of p in this case? power of p in, in, in those cases will be 4 and 6 respectively, so just m. Okay. So let me just explain uh, how many parameters you, you, you would expect. Uh, it, it's, it's easy to understand uh, because uh, this, remember this, uh, we consider this, this orbifold and then the algebra of functions on it will be deformed. So this, the singularity of this orbifold uh, are, correspond to fixed point of the group. So group, remember, act on the tor, on the, on the elliptic curve, but also on the cotangent bundle. And so to get, to get a fixed point, the p should be zero, and uh, and q should be a fixed point on the on the elliptic curve, right? So the, uh, and um, so there will be exactly as many fixed points as, as as those. Remember, four I had when m was two, or three or before points when m was six. But but each singularity. Uh, here will be locally it will be modeled by by, by caution by the by the stabilizer which is a cyclic group so so you have three four or three singularities of type a and the number of parameters of deformation i told you m minus one so it will be m minus one you, you you take the sum of these numbers so here two 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 so you subtract one from each so the total number is one plus one plus one plus one four in this case two plus two plus two six and so on so seven and eight by the way, this, uh, this is exactly the first point to be 6 or 78, right? Do you remember that? Okay. Right, so uh, now to analyze the... By the way, I didn't... I probably should, should have said. So for, for, for physicists, when, when, they look, when they're looking for this cyber within the integral system, the dynamics of the integral system uh, is, is not maybe uh, their, their primary interest, but mostly they're interested in this Toric vibration. Uh, so, uh, right. So to understand the, uh, so we need to understand geometry of that vibration. So we need to consider um, level surfaces of the Hamiltonian, and the, and the convenient way of analyzing that is by using the Lux representation for the dynamics uh, for the integral system. So um, the, so you look at the Hamiltonian dynamics for this Hamiltonian of, or the M and momenta, momentum. You just want. Uh, um, and uh, it turns out that it admits a lax, a lax representation uh, with lax matrix uh, depending on the spectral parameter. And uh, okay, so it's a little bit complicated. Uh, I, I, I probably will just gloss over here. But uh, but the structure is basically along the diagonal. So this will be a matrix of size m by m. So in the most complicated case. Remember, we're still just in ground one case. Uh, so uh, just one momentum, one coordinate, and one momentum. So if I'm a six, it will be matrix of size six by six. Along the diagonal, we have momentum with uh, roots of unity in front. And then the off-diagonal entries are a bit complicated. So uh, uh, here's a formula. But there is some function v, which depends on one index below here, and two variables. Uh, I will show it briefly on the next slide. So it's a bit complicated. Uh, for, 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 for 
experts so in, in, in genetic algebras, I can just say that uh, actually this, this, this coefficient VL, this function VL, is uh, the coefficient um, in the Dutkov apparatus in front of the powers of S of the, of the, of the, of the group elements of this uh, Right, so okay, so what is happening here? So you have uh, uh, certain elliptic functions. So phi is a very familiar combination of uh, sigma functions. So this is phi star sigma. Uh, now, some exponential factor is needed. So x, summation xi is over, over all fixed points. Uh, not all, but those which are fixed by the else, else power of the generator, so by, by, the, by, by a magnitude L, so omega, remember this M's root of unity. Okay, this capital omega has some meaning. L runs over all elements of the M, F except zero. And this coefficient here in front attached to this fixed point, these are deformation parameters exactly, which I, which I talked about earlier. So, uh, Eta, okay, eta is, uh, is, is this, uh, uh, you know, by this formula related to this, um, uh, the values of the y sub zeta at the half periods. Okay, so um, you don't have to adjust that, so just, it's, it's a little bit complicated. And uh, uh, maybe the purpose of showing it maybe was that um, if you try to calculate the, so we want to find spectral curves. In this case, it means we need to cal calculate the curve these polynomials of these uh, matrices. So if you imagine the six by six matrix, uh, uh, lots of terms, the functions there, it's even in that case, it, it seems a bit uh, daunting uh, calculating uh, this. So we're interested in calculating this, but uh, actually it can be done uh, rather, uh, rather quickly using uh, this important duality property of those functions, which I showed before, they, they, they are kind of symmetric if you swap the variables and change the coupling constant to certain dual coupling constant, then you have this property, this symmetry. And uh, so that's an important uh, property. Uh, uh, so I'll just briefly flush the formulas. For example, these dual parameters, when M equals 2, remember what we saw was rank 1 and Hamiltonian of uh, what is known as an Azamsov system, and people who, who are familiar with BCN theory of uh, an Azamsov system or uh, Dahar in type C check C, they, they, they will be familiar with this sort of transformation uh, to the dual parameters. Uh, in case you, here you have four parameters. For example, for M equals 3, the transformation looks like this. At six parameters and A and A inverse, A is just this matrix. Uh, okay, so you have similar formulas for the other cases. So it's a fairly non trivial transformation, and I, uh, I think it is essentially related to in the theory to Akamoto transformation, uh, middle convolution by cards, things like that, I think. But we haven't checked. Right, okay, so uh, so the Lux matrix also has this duality under changing swapping variables. So uh, here is a rather curious a kind of non trivial property. So if you have, remember, L was Lux matrix, my Lux matrix, independent on P, Q, and, uh, and alpha. Alpha is a spectral parameter, uh, living on the elliptic curve. And um, also on the couplings, C. Now L check is similar object when you swap the roles. So uh, you put here, instead of P in Q, you put uh, spectral uh, parameter alpha, and K is the eigenvalue K here, right? So you swap the roles, uh, Q takes place of the alpha, and you need to change parameters to C check, and then basically you get similar matrix. Well, there is a bit of a factor here, but it's a minus, but similarity transformation by some explicit uh, uh, anti diagonal matrix, and, um, and so it's, it's, it's fairly non trivial property, it's almost kind of some duality property for, for, for this elliptic uh, X matrix, and, um, and from that it's not hard 
to see that the characteristic polynomial actually splits nicely into a combination of two versions of the Hamiltonian. So H, that's my original Hamiltonian of my integral system. H uh, check is the dual Hamiltonian written with dual parameter couplings and written in this in spectral variables, K-alpha. Okay? So from, from that immediately you get that the spectral curves are described by by this form, uh, by this formula. So it's a family of curves, level sets of this uh, H H check. And uh, okay, so uh, so the spectral curves are the motion will take place along along, along the spectral uh, the level surface of the Hamiltonian, but uh, equally the uh, under this motion, if you fix the value of the Hamiltonian to some value z then the characteristic polynomial also remains constant. Okay, so that's a familiar property that spectral curves are integrals of the motion. Okay, so that's uh, uh, so now, uh, 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 now we can relate this to uh, look a little bit more into the geometry of this uh, vibration. So we have vibration by these level surfaces of the Hamiltonian or in the dual terms we have also vibration by level surfaces of H check like in the previous slide. So, 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 so once again, the dimension, uh, the phase space is two-dimensional. We have one Hamiltonian. So level surfaces are just uh, uh, complex curves. Uh, and uh, if you calculate genus using Riemann's Hurwitz, you, you, you find that the genus is m squared plus one. So it's not what you expect. You want elliptic vibration, uh, right? So if m, for instance, is six, and even if m is two, you get genus five. Of course, the answer is that uh, you, you need to take into account the symmetry, you need to take quotient by ZM. And the quotient by ZM then will be elliptic curve for genus 1. And so, uh, so, uh, and so, so that's how you get elliptic vibration on this, uh, on this phase space. And, uh, and, uh, and then you, uh, you prove that uh, the dynamics of your Hamiltonian system is just linear motion along these elliptic curves. Expected, and but um, as, as as a kind of uh, byproduct of that, you could conclude that actually, the, um, if you look at the spher spherical subalgebra, uh, <coughs> the, the geometric object behind it, the uh, spec of this algebra, actually will be a Russian elliptic surface. Okay, so that's uh, uh, and in fact uh, that duality which I talked about. Uh, can view actually the, the, there are two vibrations uh, over, over, over uh, here which are in a certain sense are dual and that's uh, so we have uh, we can look at the original phase space and uh, vibration by the level sur surfaces of H and there is also the dual uh, phase space in terms of spectral on the spectral side, I call it M check, and then uh, it is fibered by the uh, uh, by the levels of H check, and then uh, what you get is uh, actually uh, it turns out that um, it's it's not quite obvious, but it turns out that the the, the elliptic curves will be isomorphic for these two vibrations. So it's uh, so you have this duality and. Uh, Actually, uh, this, 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 this system can be identified with Hitchin system on the, on the punctured sphere. Uh, so uh, I guess this should be probably thought morally as some sort of kind of mirror, sy mirror symmetry for Hitchin uh, uh, vibrations. Um, okay, um, but these vibrations uh, geometrically uh, have a nice description. These, are, uh, the, 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 these all are elliptic, elliptic pencils. In, for m equals 3, it's a fairly standard elliptic pencil of this kind. Uh, when you have, so in P2, in projective plane, you take three lines, uh, the second the point, and you choose th three points on each line, so nine base point. If you choose these points generically, there will be no other elliptic, other cubic through these points except this reduced cubic, cubic uh, form by three lines. But if you choose these points, there is uh, one constraint. If you if you if you choose these points uh, 
uh, subject to this constraint, then there will be a, a pencil, one dimensional family of cubic curves plus into this uh, nine points. And that's, uh, that's, uh, that's how this elliptic vibration I talk about will look like in that case. And this vibration effectively, okay, how many parameters we have here? You might think we have nine parameters for positions of points, but remember there was one constraint, so eight. And also you can make uh, a projective transformation which keep these um, three lines uh, in place and reduce parameters to six. Okay, so uh, M equals four, you get a, a, a pencil of uh, quartic curves with two double points. So picture is like this, you have three lines, four points, four, and two double points here. So each curve of the, of the pencil will have an ordinary, ordinary double point at, at P9 and P10. Uh, now the curves are of degree 4, so quartix. Uh, and you can, similarly, you can count number of parameters. There are several, several effective parameters. And uh, M equals 6. Uh, it looks like this. You have 6 points here. Uh, 3 double points on that line. And 2 triple points ordinary triple points on that line. So now curves are of degree 6, and they, they need to pass through these points. Okay, so effectively this pencil depends on the parameters, so this is a pencil of uh, elliptic curves of degree 6. Okay, so, and um, also for m equals 2, well, okay, it's a little bit, uh, there, are, there are various ways of, uh, of looking at this. So, for example, you can work in, in weighted projective space, because the equation will be of that form for the pencil y squared and then uh, I'm working in projective coordinates y, y, x and w but in weighted projective space so y has weight 2 and so this, this so y squared has degree 4 so this is a in this weighted projective space and there are four lines plus it, uh, this, quart, this uh, projective space actually has a quartic singularity at one point these four lines plus this uh, Single point, and you have two points on each line, so uh, uh, so that's how it depends on four parameters eff effectively, and uh, plus the double ratio of these four lines, uh, which corresponds to this modular parameter of the elliptic curve tau. Uh, right, so that's how this uh, elliptic vibration in this case. And, uh, uh, now, okay, I, I have uh, three minutes just to say something about the quantum spectral curves. So in this case we can we can be guided by the uh, theory of Chernyk algebras because uh, they exist at the quantum level as well and you can just in the formulas for the Hamiltonian oh, sorry. Uh, you can just replace remember it was level surface of, of, of H check uh, H or, for example yes and then you just replace Hamiltonian by its quantum quantum Hamiltonian and then you view this as a differential equation for some function of psi with this <coughs> z being, being a uh, spectral variable um, and this will be a ODE of order m 2, 3, 4, 0, 6 with elliptic coefficients and so, so p hat is just the quantum momentum okay so you get the pencil so z will be a variable uh, so we get a pencil of, of ODEs and um, uh, it's uh, actually it's, it's conveni convenient to rewrite these rather, use, uh, rather than viewing them on elliptic curves you write them in uh, invariant coordinates and then you get ODEs, Fuchsian ODEs on the Riemann sphere with three or four singular points and <coughs> one accessory parameter is that when m is 2 is just the Hoyt equation, when m is 3 and 4 and 6, are, these are certain high analogs of Hoyt equation with uh, sharing ma many similarities. So for example, for special uh, integer value of parameters, you get uh, uh, explicit solutions in terms of um, kind of uh, written in, uh, in, ter in terms of certain kind of Bloch, uh, uh, Hermit Bloch and Ansatz and so on. And uh, now I can mention finally in the, in the remaining minutes uh, that uh, 
that um, uh, uh, how this links back to the fine linking quivers I showed initially. So if you look at these quantum curves, <coughs> these are Fuchsian ODEs, regular singularities. You, you can look at the monodromy uh, of this uh, of this of this family. So for each z, you got uh, Monodromy of that equation, uh, so you have a family of these monodromies, uh, monodromy representations of the fundamental group of the punctured sphere, and um, uh, so, so, so what happens is that actually they, uh, the, 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 the local monodromy uh, tells you that uh, the actually uh, there will be the eigenvalues of local monodromy around the punctures will be rather special, and as a result you conclude that uh, the monodromy uh, of each of these equations uh, can, be, can be seen as a point on the multiplicative quiver variety of those fine quivers. So this is a family dependent on that, so it's like one dimensional curve but in that uh, two dimensional uh, quiver variety. And uh, this illustrates the kind of uh, philosophy going back to uh, I guess uh, graphs of Rosler, Shatashvili, and also Kayota, uh, which says that uh, quantizing spectral curves of a Hitchin system, okay, I didn't mention a Hitchin system, but there is also interpretation uh, in terms of Hitchin system uh, in this case. So quantizing spectral curves of Hitchin system should produce a Lagrangian variety of four persons inside the interim modular space. Uh, so that's just a illustration of that. And uh, uh, just very quickly, I, I have secretly, yes, in case I have time, I don't have time, but I, I will just show that it turns out that uh, there is a, uh, in, in higher rank uh, case, we, we can also effectively describe, describe uh, efficiently describe these uh, spectral curves of these, of these uh, systems. So it's lax matrices of size, of, of, of large size, but uh, the picture is that, you, you, again, you have a vibration you have a family of curves, so sigma z is a family of curves of genus n, depending on, in this case, z will be not just one parameter, but n parameters, Coulomb, Coulomb, Coulomb coordinates, uh, or Hitchin base, you could uh, you know, that like that. And so, so you have a family of, uh, n parametric family of curves of genus n, and for each of these curves you have a Jacobian, and so you have this vibration, this story vibration is just vibration of these Jacobians over, over the base, and, and you can efficiently, uh, uh, you can describe the corresponding family of these curves in geometric terms, similar to those elliptic pencils. What happens is that you just need uh, these curves to pass, for instance, through P2, you need to pass n times, which would be multiple point, ordinary multiple point for the n. When you had double point before, it will be point for the 2n and, and so on. And the only thing, interesting thing which happens here is that point P1, which should be in degree n, you would expect, but here it splits. And so this position of this additional point P0 is additional parameter, uh, additional uh, mass in this uh, corresponding to this additional mass parameter in this uh, superconformal field theory. So now there will be instead of seven parameters, you will have eight parameters in this family. Okay, so I, I think that's uh, that's all. Thanks very much.
Um, in particular, this means that there's other that th this actually does have elliptic. This has elliptic elliptic analogs, if you will. Basically, there's uh, there's elliptic analytic equation, and this this fits into that hierarchy. Well, that's a very good uh, comment. I, 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 would, I, I would love to understand that. Yes, yes. Certainly, there is evidence that there should be there should be high analogs of these. Uh, that's right. Just one maybe brief comment. It's not exactly that because it's 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 the limit of that, right? You need to limit well, yeah, 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 I, I mean, your classical thing is, is not being relaxed. It takes one to work. Yeah. But uh, we'll we'll talk about more here. Yes, thank you. I really don't understand completely your, uh, because algebra, a group you consider is well known the reflection group, it is group G, N, 1, N. Yes, exactly. Yes, and it is uh, done and often constructed a family of uh, commuting operators, which uh, generate covariant uh, algebra for this reflection group. And the number of papers in Bayern, we constructed algebra derivated by certain element, which is, gives you a bundle element, bundle element commute, a very generic integral system, and uh, we find the relations between these elements, but problem to identify this is geometry, and we suppose that this is related to the kitchen model. Again, uh, M which appears in a uh, reflection group corresponds to other uh, functions of uh, genus M. Yes, and I didn't really long understand completely what is uh, connection with uh, tiger fitter case. Well, first of all, from, 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 from what you say, I think for, 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 Dunkel, for Dunkel and Omton, M could be anything, right? You just you just consider a finite group, subgroup of GLM, the risk product of symmetric group with the M, M could be anything, not necessarily 2, 3, 4. Yes, I must say because you mentioned the M equal to 2, 3, 4, 6. But because I want, it's, it's a global Cherenic algebra. Right? It's a, it, well, it's a kind of global point of view of Cherenic algebra. So what you're referring to is Cherenic algebra on the fine space. Well, I want it to be... Okay, it's to discuss. <laughs> that, uh, so, so, yes, you can, you can, uh, yes, you can view this as... Yes, kind of maybe we should discuss this. Thank you. Okay, are there other questions? Uh, yeah. So, if not, then thank you for the